I'm uh, used to the CBSE way of doing content. And okay. we had to get rid of that sort of a mindset where we need to jot down all the steps and, you know, do it stepwise and stuff that right. won't work here. So had to get rid of that mindset was uh, another thing which was required. And yeah, that, that was where I was facing the time crunch initially. I didn't do anything fancy. I just followed the study plan that was provided to us to the T, um, not skipping anything at all, regardless of how long it takes. Uh, we are working professionals and... Um, we do get those, you know, difficult days where, you know, we have a lot of work or certain sometimes some projects come in where you're stretching your work hours. So you tend to skip out on your GMAT practice. I think that's a very, very bad idea because then when you restart, um, it becomes a lot more harder to restart. All right. First of all, congratulations. What a miracle this has been that you scored the highest percentile than that 200 in the most dreaded section of yours, as you said. So it's amazing. I'm gen Thank genuinely, this is really, really amazing. So I'll just uh, show this for the recording. So look at, look at the percentiles. Once again, everything is, but this is just the most amazing thing. And 90 will mean the highest you can get in terms of scale also. It's incredible. And uh, let's also see what she had to say initially. These are the uh, exact words. So, first attempt. This is very, very important. And uh, Aman's videos, that is Quant Basics we are talking about. And she says, I couldn't believe my that to in Quant most dreaded section. I was too scared to even start. Forget that. So, and that 200 percentile. This is just, I mean, see, I am also so super happy because this is something that has happened in the weakest section and that too in the first attempt and uh, whatever she had to say so i'll stop this share nikita you can just start your camera yeah hi i can see you now yeah i hi, must Sandeep. say congratulations once again and uh, would like to know your journey and whatever challenges you faced with quant and how you overcame and other sections also how you prepared the whole thing just let us know please sure so um this was actually not the first time that i was attempting to study for the gmat i had given it a shot back in 2018-19. I had also given it a shot in 2022, not with top 1%, but with other providers, again, very renowned providers. Uh, but I never felt confident enough to actually go ahead and give the exam. Uh, so I never really attempted anything. Uh, but after I joined top 1%, um, I felt that I can give it a shot now. I felt prepared enough. Um, Verbal has always been something I was very confident about because um, generally my accuracy and everything was pretty high on verbal even when we used to practice. But when it comes to math, when it comes to the numbers, I always thought like I am not good at it. It was just something I had an inhibition in my mind that math is not something I can do. So even when I started practicing, I would tend to focus a lot more on verbal and, you know, go through all the videos and practice because that was something which I was comfortable with anyways. But then I realized this cannot go on for long and I had to, you know, do the quant aspect as well. Uh, right. So I... I it was a challenge like, because when we would uh, do, so I didn't do anything fancy. I just followed the study plan that was provided to us to the T, um, not skipping anything at all, regardless of how long it takes. So like some of the questions when, you know, we would do from the class sessions guide and uh, the main live class videos and everything. So that would take me a lot of time to solve. And honestly, that was also sort of demotivating that, okay, if this question is taking me 10, 15 minutes to solve in an untimed manner, how would I do it in under two minutes? So uh, that was demotivating, but I still kept going and um, I, I, I followed everything to the T, did not uh, skip anything, like I said. And um, then I completed the entire quant, like all the videos, all the, cl the class session guides, everything as we were recommended to. And uh, then I started practicing on the quant 700 to 800 questions. And uh, then when I went for the exam, it was like really a breeze. Like I had almost over 10 minutes to spare um, wow. in the quant section. In the quant yeah. section, you're saying. Yeah. So over 10 minutes to spare. 
and um, yeah that's how it went and then i had a i had bookmarked a couple of questions i went back revised them uh, changed one answer as well and uh, got it from incorrect to correct that's great so did you make any mistake at all or no mistake in quant uh, no no ma- mistake at the end of it all yeah oh wow and uh, tell us about how you prepared verbal and di as well okay it was a strong area for you verbal but still was this something different here the way rc was covered the way cr was covered just let me know that as well yeah so i think um, again i didn't do anything fancy just following the study plan uh, that is going through all the videos all the materials the pre work the post work uh, then to, after i had finished the entire course work then at the end of it all i went to cr uh, topic wise and rc 700 to 800 um so that i started doing all those passages in a timed manner and uh, cr as well and for um data insights uh, yeah for data insights also the same thing whatever was in our study plan from the uh, portal practice all of those questions that's it like so, nothing nothing out of uh, what is in the study plan so if you ever took a diagnostic let's say what was your initial score compared to the score that you've got because you're saying that you did not even imagine this score even in the 99th percentile or something so just take us through your mock journey as well and how the portal helped and what were official scores if you took the official mocks as well yeah so i had uh, just taken one mock so actually this attempt was slightly unplanned for me so i just uh, went ahead without uh, thinking too much i had booked subsequent Uh, attempts as well so this was slightly unplanned from my okay. side you had already yeah. thought that you would need more attempts that yes correct correct okay okay so i i all i thought i would need more attempt i had pre booked that already and uh, the reason is like uh, i thought okay let me familiarize myself with the testing environment that was the purpose with which i went ahead and uh, when i eventually uh, saw the score i i couldn't believe my eyes but m- the quant verbal and the yeah, di as well although the score is slightly lower on di but they were a breeze and especially quant it was a breeze all right and uh, what were your scores i just asked you and how did you utilize the portal did you just do everything the way we say in the study plan that do everything or did you yeah. skip something did you really prioritize some areas like what was the approach and your mock scores how they improved that's what so the last time i took a mock it was um about one one and a half months back so that was after uh, before i started the practice so i had gone through the the top uh, the the concepts but right. the timed practice i had not you know really started that so i was about one one and a half months back so that time the uh, mock score was just 605 Um, okay then i began in a month month and a half doing the timed practice and then yeah this is where we ended up with any section with which you are str- you were struggling with the time part let's say you were not able to finish or something wouldn't be verbal i guess but was it di or was it quant initially yeah it was quant for sure because uh, again i'm uh, used to the cbse way of doing quant and okay. we had to get rid of that sort of a mindset where we need to jot down all the steps and you know do it step wise and stuff that right. won't work here so had to get rid of that mindset was uh, another thing which was required and yeah that that was where i was facing the time crunch initially all right so coming to your exam now did which section order did you take i'm hoping you took it at a center only so yeah. that but what was your section order just let us know So my section order was I went with quant followed by verbal then I took the break and then I did di All right and uh, quant you've said you got everything right so nothing unusual also right in the quant section anything at all you feel that this was something I was not exposed to this is all together new something like that No not at all I think everything was uh, already covered and in fact the questions that we have practiced as part of the top one journey um I think in comparison to that this seemed very very straightforward because i think the questions that we are exposed to are such high level so our mind gets trained on those questions and then the actual exam you feel that like i have seen this done this before so nothing unusual at all take us through this in the verbal and di as well was there anything unusual length of passages content of passages cr questions 
integrated reasoning data sufficiency anything that you yeah. found out of the ordinary no not at all uh, even uh, for cr was pretty much in line with what again we have practiced rc we, i did get two long passages i couldn't probably even understand it all but then just following the verification method uh, answered them and got uh, i think most of them right as well right so nothing unusual in uh, di or um, rc as well okay and everything pretty regulation so where did you lose some marks then which section was it like verbal did you obviously it wasn't a perfect score so maybe one or two mistakes there in di maybe what were the number of mistakes then Just let us know also if you have checked the detailed score report yeah i did uh, i think uh, in di i i did have quite a few mistakes so i had about uh, six to seven mistakes in di uh, and uh, in in the verbal section i think it was about 3 to 4 all right and yeah they were primarily on the long rc passages uh, i think yeah not so much on cr all right and if somebody is starting to prepare or is already preparing but hasn't written the exam what are the two three things you would say they must do and must not do i mean there must be some in your mind that okay had i done this differently my result would have been let's say sooner or uh, better or different or whatever or you did some mistakes while preparing that you would urge them to avoid and some things that genuinely helped you also in the approach to study or something yeah so do's and don'ts yeah. of sorts yeah so i think i'll start while begin with the don'ts i think uh, i did a mistake which i would recommend let's not do that is that uh, you lose the consistency because uh, we are working professionals and uh, we do get those you know difficult days where you know we have a lot of work or certain sometimes some projects come in where you're stretching your work hours so you tend to skip out on your gmat practice i think that's a very very bad idea because then when you restart um, it becomes a lot more harder to restart so i would suggest that even if you are having those tough days um, you know at least take out half an hour one hour or uh, do the things probably that you are comfortable with so that you know a lot of your uh, mental bandwidth is not consumed so for me that was verbal so when i would have my uh, you know work heavy days i would work on verbal and when i had those lighter days i would take up quant because i'm a lot more fresh but don't skip that because i did that mistake and that is why my preparation time increased a lot so that okay. is definitely one thing a uh, second is don't rush through the videos particularly if you think quant is a challenge aman's basics videos i followed them i took notes i spent a lot of time on those videos yeah. and uh, that was very very helpful so if quant is a challenge do not skip those videos and skip over it. even don't rush through it just take your time with it and the same thing for verbal as well take your time with everything don't rush through the subject matter because um yeah at the end of it if you if you take your time you can get done with it in probably one attempt like i did and when it comes to um the do's um i think one i i would ha- like to highlight one thing which helped me on the test day uh, and so i was uh, reading something on the net and i uh i i saw something and that, i think that helped me a bit one was that gmat would probably throw uh questions which would you know spoil your timing so we should be like i did this in quant as well and in verbal that i would you read it and you feel like okay this i know how to solve this but this is probably going to take me a lot more time so in what i did was i bookmarked it i completed the entire section and then when i had time in hand i went back and i resolved it with a lot more time and then i changed it to correct so Uh, i think we have to be smart about where we have to invest our time as well that's great because sometimes people say that this could really backfire or something which all sections did you use this strategy in like quant you've told but did you use it in di and verbal as well i did uh, so i i did use that in particularly some questions like uh, rc and uh, cr as well not a lot so i don't like do this for a lot of the questions but uh some of the questions where you know you would probably have the time to revisit um do that so i used the strategy in both of them and um, yeah correct so i i did yeah 
and uh, are you planning to apply this year itself or are you planning to apply next year like what's the plan here r2 r probably now r1 is too close from just asking mm -hmm. because i do not know so that's why i'm just trying to understand oh yeah no uh, i would be applying mostly in r2 and uh, some of them like the canadian colleges probably in round one perfect perfect and you also wrote that you would probably increase the let's say ranking of the colleges that you want to apply to now that uh, you have a better score obviously good profile but uh, would you actually change the the actual colleges or schools you are applying to like some of them more ambitious yes so um earlier i was uh, only aiming for canadian schools so in fact like when i went ahead like the target i am had in mind was much more lower than what i got uh, because again canadian schools uh, is what i was focusing on but now with the scores that i have i am reevaluating some of my decisions i still go ahead and apply in those canadian schools i'm not going to drop that out but i'm also going to be applying to some of the schools uh, in the us and um, then we will evaluate depending on what admits we have and what scholarships i can get myself all right great do keep in touch and do let us know in case you need any help with the consulting process as well the reason i'm saying that is at least have a call and understand your options and where you can actually go for a better school maybe maybe you don't want to go to that country i do not know but whatever you plan just just reach out 